Okay, so tonight we're going to go over um, one of the most interesting things I find. A lot of people in the holiday times, and even in our country, starting off the new year, a lot of people uh, kind of look back on their year, and they go, yeah, I had a great year, oh, I had a bad year, and they get depressed. And a lot of people get suicidal. We have the highest suicide rate in our nation around the holidays, from between Christmas right into the first two weeks of the new year. In fact, I'll say to you what I found in the scripture in Kings when Elijah, the great prophet, wanted God to kill him. He's like, he had just had a great spiritual day, okay? I mean, as far as spiritual days go, if you were, if you were used by God to see one of the greatest miracles done in the days of Israel, and it gets recorded in the Bible. I mean, this guy in 1 Kings 17 and 18, he takes on... 450 false prophets of Baal. Then, he says, the Lord tells him, tell him the rain's coming. So he sends his servant to go look from the mount out towards the sea. Do you see uh, many clouds? And the kid comes back to his servant. No, there's no clouds. He says, go again. He goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, he goes, there's a, there's a, a, a little cloud like the size of a man's hand way off in the distance. And, and Elijah says, better get, get moving because there's a storm coming. And sure enough, the, the, the cloud comes over the mountain and just pours to where it floods down in the valley below called the Jezreel Valley. And Elijah, he's an old guy, he, he starts running from Mount Carmel all the way down the mountain to Jezreel Valley. He gets all the way to what would be the headquarters, or the, what do we call it, the capital, where Jezebel and Ahab's reign is from, and, he, and it's over a marathon in distance. This whole guy, and he outruns, he tells the king, you better, Ahab, you better get going with your chariot, because the rain's going to flood, and he actually beats the king back to town. This old guy running. And when he gets there, you know, he's had a pretty full day. The, the, the wife, Jezebel, says, I hate this guy. I hate this. He, Because he, she, she was a worshiper of Baal. And her, and her father was. And so she's like, I'm going to have him dead the same as he had my prophets killed. He'll die by tomorrow. And so she, she says this. And when he hears this, it's so funny to me, takes on 450 false prophets, Stands up for the Lord, stands up before all of Israel, tells all of Israel to, to meet up there on Mount Carmel. And then he gets back to, to the capital city, and there's one woman, one wicked woman. It says, then Jezebel sent messages to, to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me, and even more, if I do not make your life as the life of one of those, of them, by tomorrow at this time. This is when Jezebel, uh, uh, you know, hears about what happened to her prophets. And it says, And Elijah was afraid. And he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, to the, he said It is enough. Now, O Lord, take my life, for I am not better than my father's. And he laid down and slept under the juniper tree. So he, he's gone an extra full day's journey in the wilderness, and he, he left his servant. He says, stay here. Goes out in the, what's he going out in the wilderness for? He's like, Lord, it's enough. I'm done. You can kill. You know, take my life. Now, has anyone ever, you think, well, you just had a great spiritual victory. You stood up for the Lord. You know, awesome Probably stuff. Probably somebody killed all those people. Told all the people, Quit vacillating. God is God. You know, you made a great stand. You, 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 you prayed and the Lord sent the rain. The drought is over. And he's exhausted. And he wants to take his life. He want, well, he doesn't want to take his life. He wants who to take his life? God. God, you just kill me. Take me home. I'm done. Now, if that's not feeling like life is 
you know, you're, you're finished. He's just expressing how he is. And it says, And he lay down under a juniper tree and fell asleep. Okay? And when he fell asleep, look what the Lord did. This is the cool thing. It says, Then it says, Behold, an angel came to him and touched him and said, Arise <coughs> and eat. And he looked up and behold, there was a, a, a at his head there was a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and laid down again. This is verse 7 of First Kings chapter 19. It says, And so he, he, he sleeps, and the angel of the Lord came to him again a second time and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because your journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. So he will wind up going the next 40 days just on the strength of these two cakes that were baked by an angel. I don't know, you call this angel food cake? I mean, it, he, an angel made it for him, right? He gets angel food cake, real made by an angel, and some water given to him. If you feel like killing yourself, you, you know, this is one of those things that I have found is so easy. And my Nona, being Italian, when people came, you know, and they were down, depressed, she would always right away go into the kitchen, bring out food, say, manja, manja, means eat, eat, you know. And she would put food in front of them. And then, you know, you give them some food to eat. And, and if they were really stressed or really, like, feeling down and wanted to kill themselves, she'd be like, just just sit a minute, I'm going to go make something. Just, just rest your eyes a little. Just lean back and, you know, put your... But she just, just for a second, I'll be right back. And she would go get him something to drink. Here, have some water. And I'll, I'll be back. And then she'd go get the food, give him something to eat. And then she'd tell him, just rest a minute. Just, just take a little rest for a minute. We'll talk after you rest. You know, you need a little time to, like, let the, let the body have a little repose, you know. And they, they'd be, man, I've been going so hard. And it's, I don't even know how to, just put your head back, you know. And I, I watched her one time, just, just like a little touch on the forehead, like, put your head back, just close your eyes. You might have a friend that feels like killing themselves. Do me a favor. Just get some food for them, get them a glass of water, and put it in front of them. And say, here, eat, drink. Don't try to talk about their depression, what's bumming them out. But just eat in a time. Say, manja, a baby. Eat and drink. And then tell them to rest. Vulnerable of lay back. Take a little rest. Close your eyes. We'll talk after. Just let the, let the body, you know, have... Because they're not going to be able to hear anything you say anyway. Because it, they, their body is having a, already enough challenge. So if you know someone fighting that, do me a favor. Follow this angelic prescription that this angel did to Elijah the prophet. And see if it'll help them. And I really do know this works because I've done it quite quite many times repeatedly through my Christian experience helping people. And sometimes after they've eaten, they've had some so, some water to drink and their body kind of you know, resets. They're like, oh, it's not so bad. From the Caymans out to Honolulu, the living